it looks like we have reached the 11 o'clock hour, so we can go ahead and begin today's presentation. Hello, everyone. My name is Anna Lydia Blakely, and I would like to welcome you to today's webinar. Today we will be discussing three approaches that Chamber of Commerce and business organizations can utilize to advance the health and wellness agenda. To lead us through uh, today's presentation, we have invited Sarah Melby, who is our Director of Information and Research at ACCE, as well as Rich Hadley, who is our Education Attainment Division Consultant and was former president of Greater Spokane Incorporated. Before we begin, however, I would just like to go over a few quick housekeeping items. So if you don't mind taking a look at the right-hand corner of your screen, you should find a useful toolbar, which enables you to submit questions to our presenters. After you hear from our guest speakers, we will dedicate about 15 to 20 minutes to answering your questions, and we will encourage you to submit questions at that time. Um, currently, you'll notice that you're all in listen-only mode, but we welcome you to enter your unique audio pin, which you'll find in your toolbar, into your phone now. And by doing this, you'll gain audio access, um, and then we can unmute you to submit questions uh, during the Q&A portion of our call. Um, should you decide to utilize this feature, however, we just ask that you please do not place this on hold at any time during the webinar, uh, just to avoid any hold um, music disruptions. Um, you can also find a copy of today's presentation available to download, along with a copy of our health and wellness frameworks in the handout section of your toolbar. Uh, lastly, I'd like you to know that today's webinar is being recorded, and it will be available online at ACCE's university uh, webpage um, after today, which means you can share a copy of uh, today's presentation with your colleagues. Uh, so with that being said, I would now like to hand over the presentation to my colleague, Sarah, to, to, to kick off today's presentation. Thank you so much, Anna. It's a pleasure to be here with you all today and to share these resources about um, the health and wellness frameworks for chambers of commerce and businesses. So we'll dive right into our first um, uh, framework area, which is actually ready to learn. And with all of our frameworks, you'll see the business case and the, the chamber case and um, how it affects all of our communities and healthy workplace environments. So with our ready to learn area, um, the call to action is really to work with community stakeholders to increase investments in quality early childhood education and wellness services to ensure that children are healthy and ready to learn when they reach kindergarten. And we know that children who are healthier learn better and children who are more educated are healthier in turn. So improving education attainment and health outcomes will produce a long-term, more talented and productive future workforce. So we actually have um, several sample messaging um, pieces here on both our PowerPoint presentation and throughout our Chamberpedia pages, which is available, again, through Education Attainment Division's um, website section, as well as our Chamberpedia section of information um, on the ACCE.org website. So some of our sample messaging, we know that parents, policymakers, business leaders, and the general public increasingly recognize the importance of the first few years in the life of a child. And this impacts um, physical, emotional, social, and intellectual development. And we do know that many children face deficiencies between the ages of zero and five, which impedes their ability to develop the fullest potential. Um, research from Bridge Span shows that 5.8 million children nationwide are not on track to succeed as they begin kindergarten. And this problem is even more prevalent in low-income communities. So we know that um, children must be healthy so they are prepared to enter and, and learn better in school. A well child will enjoy greater long-term success in school and throughout adulthood and that enables a talented and productive workforce um, capable of uh, competing in the 21st century global market. We also, stats show, research shows that improving education attainment correlates to higher income, which allows for access to healthier foods and safer environments, again, impacting long-term health and wellness and wealth through the um, child 
into adulthood. The early years, especially the first three years of life, are so important for building the baby's brain. And everything the baby sees, touches, tastes, smells, or hears helps to shape the brain for the future um, in thinking, feeling, moving, and learning. And we know for sure with um, our sample messaging, and you can take this to your, your environments, your communities, all children, all humans have the right to be healthy. Um, some of the key facts we can point out, again, um, from research from BridgeSpan, a child whose cognitive skills are increased will see an average lifetime family income income increase of $15,800. Um, this research comes from a report called Billion Dollar Bets. And again, this research is um, found on our Chamberpedia page for Ready to Learn. So we know that um, infusions of uh, philanthropic investments focused on children from birth to age five could put thousands of low-income Americans on an upward mobile trajectory. So it's really important for chambers and businesses and communities to work in this space. We also know, in addition to um, cognitive skills, that health and wellness and obesity impacts children. Um, childhood obesity has been shown to cost over $19,000 per child over a lifetime. And that's research from Duke University. Um, so there's a huge impact um, if you can reduce childhood obesity and improve long-term well-being. It impacts substantial health and um, economic benefits. We know also that return on investment, every dollar spent on childhood benefits um, society ranging from a dollar eighty to seventeen over seventeen dollars. That's research from the Rand Institute. So it can be hard to uh, measure, though, and there is, is believed that this return on investment value may be much higher than the a dollar eighty to over seventeen dollars in the long run. Um, and again, children who are disadvantaged start kindergarten as much as 18 months behind their peers. So we see the impact intellectually, health-wise, and then they're just not ready to learn if um, coming from a disadvantaged um, socioeconomic background. Um, children reading below grade level at the end of fourth grade will not graduate from high school. Research shows us that. Most fourth to eighth graders are not proficient in math or reading in any state. Um, and traditionally, workforce professionals have sought to close this gap by addressing educational deficiencies during those early childhood years. And this is where chambers can really come into play in this work. And so chambers have a gold mine of opportunities to work with um, organizations and businesses. And we're going to hear from um, uh, our very own Rich Hadley on a few rich, super rich examples from Chambers of Commerce. So take it away, Rich. Thank you, Sarah. That's pretty clever. Huh? Um, <laughs> well, I think that I think the return on investment uh, discussed uh, by Sarah applies in Chambers. Think about it. Uh, chambers are involved. In, most all Chambers are involved in some form of economic development. Either they own it or they're partners in it which is all about creating jobs, and ultimately it takes talented people to be in those jobs. And what we are learning at chambers across the country is that health and wellness applies to the companies that are our members and, and our community, and as such can be a catalyst for growing our economy. So the return on investment makes a lot of sense and fits very well with the subjects that we're talking about today. Um, there are three examples there. I, uh, let me just give you a little bit of background. Um, I think that many of you are involved in this space already, uh, in some cases by collective impact models, cradle to career. Other cases, chambers own a program or a project themselves, and sometimes they partner with unique people or unique organizations. In the case of Ardmore, as an example, um, I think that's an example of trial and error. The chamber really started out with a huge cornerstone program where they raised $3 million and were really aimed at a couple of school districts to look at raising standards. And after three years, had some difficulty in, in measuring 
um, having measurable results. And so they retooled their program uh, and decided uh, another approach, in this case working with uh, five school districts and with the Head Start program uh, on what they, what they call uh, preschool student growth evaluation system. So what is that? Oh, well, okay, what it is is aimed at uh, school readiness curriculum that is turned into a set of teaching aids uh, that can be taken out uh, to people who are remote from preschool opportunities or who can't afford preschool. So that is the nature of the um, uh, aids that the Ardmore uh, folks uh, implemented. A different way of looking at it, Glenwood Springs in Colorado has a motto called Chamber for Good. And uh, that's, I think that's a really cool way of describing their orientation through their own foundation of looking at how they partner in the community. And we're all conveners, this chamber, so they're always at the table and working with the Aspen Foundation on early childhood education. And it's really cool because they have preschool uh, on wheels. And this is a way to reach economically disadvantaged populations where they can't afford uh, to attend preschool or they don't have the transportation ability. So instead, Gus the bus uh, goes out around to those neighborhoods and, and those, that bus has been uh, transformed into a state-of-the-art uh, preschool program. And they've served 120 students in 12 neighborhoods as a result of taking it on the road, so to speak. Very uh, I think, clever and important. And it reminds us that foundations are really important as partners. They have money. In this case, the Aspen Foundation. Aspen is 41 miles from Glenwood Springs, but it's their region and they work together. The last example is really one that's more about advocacy and leadership. In Idaho, the state does not have a preschool uh, early childhood education program like many of our states do. And so three of the chambers, uh, Lewis and Clark, Coeur d'Alene and Boise, have all collaborated uh, to be effective at the state capitol, uh, pushing for early childhood, pushing for uh, STEM programs, uh, pushing for an increase in state uh, funding for uh, K-12 to schools and better pay for teachers, a whole sort of package and portfolio. But really it's aimed at uh, early childhood education, getting the state to adopt an early childhood education program. Most of our chambers are involved in advocacy. This is another example. So you have three examples, one where trial and error was involved, one where you partner with a foundation, and one where it's sort of in the chamber's wheelhouse to be involved. I think they're all very different, but very, uh, very good examples of how uh, to work on ready to learn and make sure that our our uh, early youngest citizens, those in the zero to five category age group, come to school ready to learn and ready uh, to be productive. So we can move on to our next category. Great, thanks, Rich. And you said it. Chambers are truly conveners and collaborators. And um, today, and in our, in our all of our resource pages, we continue to demonstrate how chambers are working in this space. Um, and we'll have resources. Anna will share um, a little bit more how to access those towards the end of the webinar. We're always happy to answer questions on that. But we know that ready to learn healthy children means a healthier workforce. And chambers are definitely able to support support these efforts through local programs and initiatives. And so by having healthy children, it also means we have healthy um, employees. So the healthier the children, the more time that employees can spend at work, and um, the healthier parents are, they can bring this in turn to their um, homes. So this is one reason why workplace wellness is so important um, and the call to action really here is to help employers implement innovative and effective programs and workplace policies that encourage the adoption of healthier lifestyles because again we see this returning to the home place environments 
and then again impacting the ready to learn. So it's a it's a very cyclical circular here. All of this impact is quite um, quite large. So wellness programs produce more productive employees. It helps attract and retain talent. Um, it, it, uh, wellness programs build staff morale, minimize staff turnover, and combat employee absenteeism, and reduce healthcare costs for employers. So there are so many sample messages here that chambers can use to work with your businesses. Um, I'll just list a couple here, and they're also on your slides. But basically, workplace um, healthy workplaces promote safe and healthy work practices, which boost profitability and productivity among employers of all sizes, from our very smallest um, businesses to our large corporations. A healthy workforce lowers cost and improves safety, pro productivity, and overall long-term health. Again, these are all stats that are proven. Um, and even old Benjamin Franklin said it right in the 1700s, um, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So you can always fall back on that wonderful quote from Ben Franklin. Um, companies that have exemplary safety, health, and environmental programs have outperformed the S&P 500 by between 3 and 5 percent. That's a huge improvement. So you know that healthy employees are actually um, improving the output of your um, in your companies, your businesses. Um, good health is, in fact, good business. So employers who focus on protecting and promoting health and safety gain more productive and satisfied employees. Again, you mentioned um, reductions in absenteeism and lower levels of healthcare spending, and then in addition, a decrease in rates of illness and work-related injuries. And the CDC Business Pulse has all of these um, statistics. And again, pointing to the CDC, every year, employee illnesses and injuries cost U.S. businesses $225 billion. Um, so that also amounts to $1,685 per employee. Improvements in health and wellness in the uh, workplace can really bring these costs down. So if you want to save $3 for every dollar spent on employee wellness programs, employee medical costs fall by an average of over $3, and absenteeism costs fall by over $2.73. This return on investment suggests the wider adoption of such programs could prove beneficial for budgets and productivity as well as um, health outcomes. So also, some other statistics here, sick workers, uh, work-related injuries and illnesses, chronic diseases, absenteeism, and sick employees who return to work before getting well cost U.S. employers billions of dollars. So education around these areas, obesity, smoking, heart disease, um, all, of, all of these health, health um, and wellness focus areas can really improve the U.S. economy, can improve your workplace environments. Best practice workplace wellness programs are linked to superior corporate stock performance. Um, it does increase the uh, bottom line, healthy bottom line for corporate America. Um, the SHRM, SHRM, points to this research, as well as research from HERO. It's, um, and the Health Enhancement Research Organization provides this correlation between comprehensive best practice wellness programs and corporate stock performance. So it's been proven again and again. Um, additional articles, examples, case studies, and statistics are all found on our Workplace Wellness Chamber PDF page. And then Rich can again take it away to share some more examples of return on investment of chambers working in the healthy workplace um, space. So again, here you go, Rich. Okay, well, <clears throat> a dollar spent on medical, uh, on wellness reduces medical cost by three dollars. So everybody that's listening, remember, this applies to your employer too, your chamber. And uh, so modeling uh, workplace wellness at the chamber is important. And, and uh, I would say, let's start with Mason City. They do it as good as anyone I've ever seen. So Mason City uh, did a lot of work, has done a lot of work uh, on other categories of education attainment, 
working with 20 school districts uh, to taking the National Career Readiness Certificate, and even their own chamber board took that, that test. That, that's a, another aside. But the main point here is that uh, Iowa's governor and Wellmark, the Blue Cross Blue Shield affiliate, uh, sort of adopted the Blue Zone model program for the state, and Mason City was one of the uh, charter programs associated with that, getting a three-year grant uh, for the chamber. Uh, the, the city hired three, two staffers, the chamber one, and the chamber took on worksite wellness. And they have uh, had teams of uh, their members competing to improve worksite experiences at their own business. But they've also modeled it themselves with changes in food around the office and fitness technology, monthly wellness goals, walking meetings, and supportive communication. So Mason City is a really good model of the behavior, behavior that you want, to, uh, want others to adopt. So that's why they won a regional innovation award uh, at the ACC conference in Savannah. So no, Noble, Noblesville, excuse me, that the chamber there has done a lot of work on soft skills uh, for existing and young em, em workers. And I bring this up because uh, health and wellness isn't the only thing you know that these chambers do. But on, on the issue here, uh, they adopted a team community-wide called Invest in Hamilton County. And it's based on Hamilton County being the healthiest county in Indiana. And I would just say, take a look at your, your uh, county health uh, marks to look at where your county ranks in your own state. In the state of Idaho, Indiana, excuse me, the state chamber has done a great deal in this area of wellness. And it's another example of how we partner with people in our own business here at the State Chamber. So take a look at the Indiana State Chamber website and the way Noblesville has uh, partnered with them to be a healthy location. And then finally, the Tri-Cities, right in our neck of the wood out here in Washington. Uh, Lori's done a great job. In fact, on the previous slide, uh, it said good health is good business. And that's the theme that they adopted. And it's a great theme. And they work with uh, companies uh, similar uh, to Mason City where they do some competition between teams around uh, fitness, diet, and sleep, and they even had one of those team members, a tech wizard, create an app for them uh, to measure that, kind of like your own personal Fitbit. Um, they also have uh, an annual wellness expo and got a $10,000 sponsor from Amazon. So from a chamber standpoint, that sounds like a, a good uh, opportunity as well. There are sponsorships available around health and wellness, and it's a great theme and a great brand for your chamber. So three more examples of how chambers with the DNA of convening, partnering, and collaborating are making a difference. Fantastic. Thanks, Rich. And you said it again. I think you're saying there's a theme here. Listen, let's listen to Rich. <laughs> He says it right every time. Partnerships are key. Um, and this is something that chambers are already experts in. So you get to you know, take this partnership ability that you all share and just extend it into the health and wellness um, arenas here for all of the frameworks we're talking about. Um, and chambers are, and businesses are in the exact right spot, basically a tipping point to really make a huge difference in employee wellness. And so by em implementing health and wellness programs, employees then have the ability to adopt healthier lifestyles. And as we've already mentioned, then that impacts the home life environment. Um, the benefits of workplace wellness initiatives far outweigh their cost. And not only do these initiatives help employees adopt healthy work life and balance, uh, habits, they also produce more productive employees and help re attract and re attract and retain talent um, and uh, minimize turnover again, in ultimately improving that bottom line for businesses. Um, healthy workplace environments go hand in hand with healthy communities. So healthy bottom line is all over the place when you start talking about children and our workplace environments and then 
ultimately um, it's coming from our healthy communities. So we're going to look at the third framework here, which is healthy communities, healthy community, community cultures. Healthy communities influence healthy businesses and vice versa. So we're going to continue with more examples here. Um, healthy, a healthy community equals a strong local economy. And the call to action here is to support and advocate for community-wide health and wellness focus uh, councils, events, programs, and policy changes that make your community a better place to live, work, and play. Healthy communities do definitely attract talent, increase talent, they increase employer net profits and drive business development. And again, this is a tipping point towards economic vitality and equitable prosperity for your communities. Um, if that's not enough sample messaging, I've got more for you. Um, the places we live, work, and play can help or hinder the ability to live healthy lives. Chambers of Commerce can work closely with employers and community leaders to create and support healthy, livable communities that encourage healthy choices, including physical activity, just as Rich was mentioning, exercise programs. And again, these programs start right at your own chambers and then lead into businesses and then lead into communities, and it feeds all in a healthy way um, each of these areas. Um, so chambers can lead and advocate for, advocate for community-wide health and wellness-focused councils, again, uh, events, programs, and policies that make your community a better place to live and um, recreate. Chambers and businesses are poised to create a culture of health, ultimately impacting workforce and economic health. So chambers can harness this collective power of leaders from multiple sectors and community members and help put health within everyone's reach by addressing gaps that um, may negatively affect certain populations. Um, the county health rankings has great statistics that you can use, as well as talking points for your own communities. We do have the uh, county health ranking link um, from our uh, Chamberpedia pages under health and wellness resources. Um, community health is definitely critical to the health of the um, workforce. So eating healthy, exercising, the prescription for healthy living sounds simple, but so often the places we live, learn, work, play um, really impact our ability to make um, healthy choices. So thinking about access to fresh food, adequate housing, um, how we get around from driving, walking, um, or taking public transit, um, multiple impact and factors impact our health. And we know from, again, st statistics from the CDC, chronic diseases are responsible for se 7 of 10 deaths each year. So treating people with chronic disease accounts for 86% of our nation's health care costs. That's huge. Um, there is definitely a correlation between workforce health and community health. Healthy people are a great asset to successful business. And that comes from a direct quote from a vitality report. Driving changes at the community level will drive changes at the business level. There are 10 modifiable health risk factors that are linked to more than 20% of health employee health care spending. And that again comes from a vitality report. The 10 factors are all controlled depression, blood glucose, sugar levels, blood pressure, body weight, tobacco use, physical inactivity, stress, cholesterol, nutrition and eating habits, and alcohol or drug consum consumption. Um, we have a new report from the Gallup Business Journal that looks at um, both um, body weight, ob obesity, and tobacco use, and it impacts um, our bottom line. So that, again, is available on our Chamberpedia page if you're looking for very current stats. And also, um, additional current stats. What's the value of exercise in our communities? Um, $2,500. Um, from the New York Times last week, a study looked at a randomized group of over 26,000 people, ages 18 and up, that have heart disease. And the study found that, on average, $2,500 a year could be saved if um, exercise was um, happening at least five days a week. And even for healthy people with no heart problems, the study looked at um, 
finding an average of $500 of savings on medical costs if everyone makes the time for recommended levels of exercise. And um, we have those recommendations also on our Chamberpedia pages as well as this article. So the health and wellness toolkit that is available in your panel here as well as on our Chamberpedia pages does look at additional stats and t um, talking points that you can take um, back to your businesses and back to your community la leaders for more partnership. And Rich will uh, take it away again for more examples um, from Chambers and how they're working with healthy community cultures. So here you go again, okay. Rich. Yep. So the last item on what's the value of exercise is a very personal one for me. I, uh, in my family, my brother and my, and my mother both had heart-related uh, diseases, uh, and that's why I run. Last year I ran over a thousand miles, just doing it, you know, one day at a time, not a thousand miles at once, and uh, that's my way of addressing this. And I think if you just amplify that community-wide, finding ways for people to be healthy and then healthy communities. So the examples that we have, um, I'll, I'll start with the Seminole Chamber uh, in Oklahoma because it's, it's got a unique partner, the Seminole Tribe. You know, many tribes have fitness centers and if you're located in an area where there are tribes, you may have already been at a, a fitness center that they've sponsored. They're really quite good uh, in many, many locations. Uh, they also have unique funding uh, abilities, and in this case, using cigarette tax funds, uh, they partnered with the uh, chamber and the community to do something very simple, and that is uh, funded lighting around the school track so that residents and families who are, you know, in school or in jobs all day long, and it's hot in Oklahoma, have a cool place to go at night to get their exercise. It's a very simple approach, but very impactful. In our community here in Eastern Washington, the Kalispell Tribe of Indians partnered with uh, Greater Spokane Incorporated, our chamber, to advance medical education. And that's a bigger and longer initiative, but it's an example of comprehensiveness. So anyway, then there's a different approach. Uh, and that is Billings, Montana. And it's about how you build the brand. So Billings is in the big, si big sky state of Montana, and they're capitalizing on their outdoor western brand by focusing a lot on uh, trails, uh, you know, happy trails to you, you know, that one. Uh, so they've developed a marathon loop of uh, off-road trails uh, they've got a heritage trail system that's 40 miles in length, length uh, and they're working on an interpretive site that uh, kids can go to and learn about uh, health and fitness in their region and also then go out on those trails. So it is a way of building a brand, but also working with your schools uh, to help them on their health and fitness uh, goals as well. Uh, then the final example is sort of, we all have, as chambers, we have programs that spin off, right? So the Fond du Lac Chamber, in their leadership program, had a, uh, one of the leadership projects was Grow, Gather, and Give, uh, and the leadership project uh, decided they needed a community partner. That wasn't the chamber, but the Boys and Girls Club, club. and so they uh, launched uh, a set of uh, master, uh, working with master gardeners instead of garden throughout the community to raise healthy foods and then package those foods uh, and give them to, to needy families. Uh, their pilot was 30 families and they had a $5,000 grant to start out and they exceeded that. They had five to seven businesses that contributed the money and partnered on producing the gardens. Uh, the difficulty here is this was all volunteer. These were excited volunteers who had worked in the leadership program, but they didn't have the sustainability uh, necessary. So they were, uh, they are at a point where they're trying to figure out whether in 2017 they can find five to seven other businesses and, and move this project along. So really good idea 
and one that uh, is, is very similar to what we face as chambers, which is if you have volunteers who are motivated but don't have the money or the staff support, sometimes those projects can't be sustained. So working with tribes, the outdoor brand, and spin-off organizations, all different ways of harnessing the community. Super. Thanks, Rich. And I think it's exciting to see how communities are, you know, chambers and communities are taking advantage of um, highlighting what they shine in. Um, and you see this across the country always with, you know, the different spaces that chambers work in. Um, no one chamber and no one community is exactly the same. So, you know, shine on what makes your community and your chamber unique. And I love the, um, I don't know about you, but where I'm at, it's almost basically so I love the garden example and I think about you know what makes up the recipe for a culture of health and we know that the essential ingredients in a healthy life are um, housing adequate housing public transportation quality health care and what you were just mentioning rich the healthy and fresh food choices um, safe places to exercise and play with lighting and trails initiatives and then tying it all in healthy workplaces and healthy learning environments and these all impact um, you know this this culture of health and how we can um, improve chambers and businesses and communities and organizations can really work together and the key is here um, we need a song rich can do it all you can sing and you can run <laughs> we need a song <laughs> to work together <laughs> a song for uh, theme song to work together in business government with individual schools and organizations to help build um, healthy communities and ultimately chambers again were conveners part um, partnerships um, collaborators we understand this need um, to embody and um, and truly exemplify that we're all in this together. So I think again, if we had a um, theme song, work together, <laughs> play together, we're all in this together to to have healthy uh, healthy lifestyles. So I think that wraps up our three frameworks and the numerous examples. Um, I'll turn this back over to Anna. Yes. Thank you so very much, Sarah and Rich, um, for providing such fabulous overview of these three health and wellness opportunities for our business community. Uh, Rich, I have to say I'm greatly impressed by your fitness goal of, of running so many miles a year. I think you've definitely motivated me to stick to my, uh, my health and wellness go goals moving forward. <laughs> um, but as Sarah mentioned um, earlier on the webinar, uh, and she's mentioned quite a few times, that we do offer additional sample messaging, uh, facts, and chamber-led best practices on our health and wellness chamberpedia pages. And I'll show, um, show you in just a minute where you can access those resources. But in the meantime, we would love to take any questions um, that you have um, regarding any of these approaches. And I welcome you to either Submit your question into the questions tool box in your toolbar, or you can raise your hand um, in the toolbar, and I can unmute you so you can present your question directly to Sarah or Rich. So as, as you're submitting your questions, I'll go ahead and just uh, go over some of the resources that we have available. Oops, I apologize. I'm going to exit out of this PowerPoint presentation. Oh, and I can't seem to do that. I apologize. So um, because I can't exit out of the screen, um, you can uh, visit our health and wellness webpage at acce.org forward slash EAD uh, under, uh, under slash um, health. Um, on our webpage, you will see um, an opportunity section of our website, which outlines different resources that we have available. Uh, those resources include our uh, championing health and wellness communication frameworks for Chambers of Commerce. That document is also available in the handout section of your screen. Um, coming soon, we also are going to post a new one-pager um, that kind of outlines these health and wellness solutions for the business community and the the document's framed a little bit differently um, than our frameworks piece. Uh, the one pager really speaks to businesses and employers and encourages them to get involved 
um, in various health and wellness initiatives. Uh, you can also take a look at our Chamberpedia pages on health and wellness. Again, you can access those Chamberpedia pages uh, directly um, for, from our um, Education Attainment Division um, Health and Wellness page, and that link to that page is on your screen. Um, we also post regular features about uh, program funding uh, and networking opportunities. And then lastly, um, on our Health and Wellness page, you will find a uh, sample workforce wellness communication brief uh, that you can utilize within your organization. And now I'm going to check quickly to see if we have any uh, questions. And I see that we have a question from Shuma uh, Pons, who's our uh, program officer at the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. So Shuma, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you now. And you can go ahead um, and raise your question. Thanks, Anna. Uh, thanks, Sarah and Rich, for uh, great presentations. I really enjoyed uh, the combination of messages with practical examples from which to draw inspiration. Uh, I was wondering, in the area of workplace wellness, could you comment on any emerging or new health issues you're seeing from employers and from communities? You know, what's what's sort of the the newest thing you're seeing bubble up, and and then what supports might be available to chambers looking to address those new issues? Thank you. Um, I can I can respond to that, Shuma uh, Rich Hadley here and. Um, in Spokane, one of the, it's, this is not new, but uh, Priority Spokane, uh, which is a community collaboration that GSI is part of, uh, is addressing uh, the mental health issue because it, of its uh, obvious impact and prevalence inside the workforce. And that uh, affects our hospitals who have many um, people with anxiety and mental health disorders end up in the, uh, either in jail sometimes or in the emergency rooms or both. So looking at that from the stand, looking at mental health from the standpoint of how we reach younger populations early to find, um, uh, to address the symptoms of that work with families and work then on community solutions. That's one in Spokane that's being dealt with. I don't know that it would be called new, but it's new for Priority Spokane. Okay, thanks. And just to tie in, um, when you all get a chance to take a look at the Workplace Wellness um, Chamberpedia page, that actually numerous examples of both where chambers are working in, in different models and spaces um, to, um, again, implement new workplace wellness programs. Some of them have been around for a number of years. Some are relatively new. Um, but you can go to that Chamberpedia page and, and read about um, the chambers, both that Rich mentioned and then numerous others. So uh, Greater Kansas City, a large chamber of commerce, um, they have implemented a healthy Kansas City workplace wellness initiative um, that recognizes or organizations for innovation and promoting a, a culture of health in their workplaces. Um, there are numerous examples like that. Iowa um, City Area Chamber of Commerce, and Rich mentioned this before, but Blue Zone projects, um, Blue Zone work sites um, examples, and how to um, create a Blue Zone work site certification. Um, we have examples of these brochures and how chambers have implemented some of this um, through the samples on the Chamberpedia page. Um, there are a couple of Blue Zone communities and work site examples here. Um, there are also uh, different competitions for workplace wellness and worksite wellness examples. Um, the Nashville Area Chamber of Commerce had a chamber health competition in initiative. Um, so that's one other example. Again, all of these are listed on the Chamberpedia page for workplace wellness. But there are also some great implementation guides. So Shuma, that was a good um, question. You know, how do how does a chamber get these ideas, and um, how how do you actually implement? So um, some of these these examples are meant to kind of feed your feed your soul, feed your fire in this workplace wellness area, um, and so you, you'll see them again on the pages. 
Chamberpedia pages, but we also list um, select workplace wellness implementation guides. Um, the CDC has some. Um, there's um, some guides from university studies. John, Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health has a um, workplace wellness implementation guide. The RAND Corporation, they also produce statistics. They have um, five steps to create a successful workplace wellness program. So um, on and on, the examples exist. And then other spaces, um, I just this morning just read an article about why walking will improve your meeting. <laughs> so in the very most recent um, um, research statistics, it shows that walking is great for brains. So some ideas we all, we'll uh, list here, um, but walking improves creativity. And so you may consider having you know walking meetings and um, creating that for your own chamber and, and finding ways to bring in um, that kind of program to businesses, to your business members. Um, but the statistics are pretty big. In a university research experiment, participants were 60% more creative in their responses when they were walking rather than sitting. And that um, creativity persisted for several minutes after a participant stopped walking. So I thought that was a great a great one for a person like Rich. I like to move. I like to either run or walk or, or be active. I'm sure like many of you on the call. And um, so so the our chamber PD pages look at these stats and um, provide that. And then we also want to hear what you're doing at your chambers for any of you on the call or for any of you listening to this recording afterwards. Um, we have a way on our Chamberpedia pages to submit your own examples. Um, so we definitely want to hear from you and you know, help, help create more lists on ideas on how to bring workplace wellnesses to your members. Mm -hmm, absolutely, and thank you, uh, Sarah. Um, and Shuma, just to go back to your question about interesting uh, health and wellness opportunities that we've seen arise. Um, one of the other opportunities that we've um, we've seen from our members is um, the opportunity in um, improving tourism um, in a community as um, individuals are interested in health and wellness activities when they travel. So chambers of commerce are looking at how they can improve uh, walking trails um, or activities uh, for uh, tourists. And that, in turn, drives business development. So for example, there may be a need for more companies to come in to sell shoes to local residents and tourists in the community. So that's just another interesting um, opportunity that we've seen arise in addition to uh, mental health and uh, substance abuse. Um, so they don't just ban the, the ready-to-learn uh, workplace wellness or healthy communities. Um, the opportunities um, really are endless. Um, which is really exciting. Um, I did receive a question from one of our members asking um, if it's possible to uh, share a copy of today's slide. It is available in the handout section for you to download. Um, you are also more than welcome to email me directly um, and I can go ahead and uh, share a copy of today's uh, presentation with you. Um, in the handout section you'll also find a copy of our health and wellness uh, frameworks for Chambers of Commerce. So we encourage you to take a look at that document as well. Um, do we have any other questions from our participants? Feel free to raise your hand and I can unmute you or you can submit a question in the questions toolbar. Um, and I do see we just got another question which was how can ACCE or what can ACCE do to support your chamber? So um, one of the opportunities that we do have available for you is our health and wellness um, web page and I have included a link to that page uh, on on your screen for you. You can also um, contact me uh, directly and I'll uh, list my email address in just a minute and we can pair you with one of our education um, a team and division consultants who can walk through your chamber's health and wellness agenda um, and identify any opportunities uh, to advance that agenda forward. Um, and another question. I just Oh, uh -huh. Go ahead. can I just add to that? Um, so about 20 chambers have been part of, uh, thanks to Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, been part of a small chamber task force around health and wellness, looking at how uh, ACCE 
what we can learn from those 20 and then how ACCE can provide information. So Anna and Sarah have both already uh, introduced you to lots of it. I would say that a lot of the input was uh, we need uh, we need toolkits, we need something to get us started. Uh, how about uh, something that is just add water, something that's very simple that I adopt as a model from someone else or something I can put on my letterhead. And then a third thing that I would just bring up is we um, in every state there is a state chamber execs group. Ours is called WCCE Washington Chamber Execs and they meet in November. And a presentation like you saw today, slimmed down um, to 30 some minutes, will be presented at that meeting. And for those who are doing good work in this space, uh, you could partner with ACCE and you could take some of this information to your chamber execs meetings where another, depending on your size and the state, but 50 to 100 other chambers can benefit from it. Thank you, Rich. And I'm going to go over just a few additional resources that we have available. Um, but feel free to submit any last questions if you have any. Um, so as I had mentioned, we do have uh, various health and wellness uh, resources available within our Chamberpedia pages. And I've included a link uh, to that to our Chamberpedia pages for you um, on your screen. So take a look at the county health rankings and roadmaps. Um, Business Action Center, and that includes um, additional tools and resources for employers. So we encourage you to take a look at their resources as well. Um, and then also, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation currently has their Culture of Health uh, prize opportunity um, open right now, and they're now accepting applications. Um, and their program recognizes communities that have placed a priority on health by creating powerful partnerships to transform neighborhoods, schools, and businesses so that good health flourishes everywhere. Uh, the deadline to apply is November 3rd uh, by uh, 3 p.m. Eastern uh, Standard Time. So you can take a look at that opportunity as well. Um, and all, as always, um, you are more than welcome to contact any ACCE staff member. Um, on your screen, you'll just see a few of um, the contacts um, to our Education Attainment Division staff members. Um, but also we can always connect you with Rich Hadley for a consultation um, or Sarah who is uh, very knowledgeable around facts, sample messaging, um, and she has put together so many fabulous resources on our Chamberpedia pages. Um, so you have a full support system here that's um, ready to help if you ever need assistance. I do not see any additional questions at this time. So Sarah and Rich, I would just like to thank you once again so very much for reviewing these opportunities um, and for your time. And I want to thank everyone who participated in today's conversation um, as well. Again, um, as I had mentioned earlier, the, a copy of today's presentation is available in the handout section of your toolbar. If you have any questions, you may also email me directly at ablakely at acce.org. Thank you.